Hi there guys, this is Farmer Bob. Trust you are well, man. <laughs> Good to be back on another video, guys. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, our video today is going to be about pedestrians. How to add a pedestrian spline to your map. We will be doing vehicles next and then maybe trains. I'm not too sure of the trains yet, um, but definitely the vehicles as well, obviously today, the pedestrians. Now, what is a spline, guys, for pedestrian spline? It's basically a set of uh, navigation points that you put down on your map where you want the pedestrians to walk. That's all it is, a spline. It's a, it's a line that with waypoints that the pedestrians just follow from start to end. That's basically what the spline is. So simple and easy as that. Now, um, I want to, I'm actually going to show you the difficult way of making a spline or let me say not the difficult way but the the long way or the proper or decent way rather because if you import the spline it's a bit of a nightmare to import it and uh, end up moving all that little uh, contours around or, or the the waypoints sorry not contours <laughs> the waypoints so uh, here we are on a, a, a map on busy converting and uh, this is the Freakly map, by the way. It's coming up soon. I'm busy converting that into uh, FS22. So what we want to do is I'm going to put some pedestrians to walk from here, just along the end up to there, just as an example for you guys. Um, I actually want to make them to walk alongside this road there on the on the side of it up to the shop here at the bottom, you know. So, But for the example, that's more than enough to um, get us going. All right, so I'm going to start from scratch, guys. As you can see in my splines, there's nothing there about pedestrians. Now, the splines transform is empty. This It's just a transform that's been named spline. So if you don't have a, a, a splines transform, you can just grab a create transform and just name it splines here. And then you'll have a splines transform like that. All right, so I'm just going to just sharing that with you. There's nothing significant about the splines transform. So we are going to now add a, uh, a pedestrian system. So we want to create, obviously, first a transform and just name it pedestrian system here. Now this, uh, you will spell a pedestrian like this, like that, and then capital S uh, system, like so. Pedestrian system. And then what we're going to do or is it now a small letter P? I can't remember now. Um, I think it's a small letter P, guys. I better leave it like that because traffic system has got a small T. Yeah. So then you cut it, Control X, and just drop it in your splines. Now, to, to, to tell you the truth, I don't think that the name of this um, transform has any significance. It's actually the script that we're going to, there's two scripts that run on it um, that uh, makes this thing work. Alright, so I'm just going to move it up one because I like it to be traffic, pedestrian and then AI. Oh yes, and that's another thing we're going to also handle, obviously, is the AI system, how that works. But for, that, for today, let's focus on the pedestrians. Now, to make this pedestrian system work, you first need an attribute or a script that tells it that this is a pedestrian system. And then you also know, need to know uh, there's an, a setup for the pedestrians and it's in data maps and then you have the three maps alpine f4 and us each of them have their own type of pedestrians and you will find a pedestrian xml for it there it is pedestrian system and you can also see the name for it there all right so here we go if we open this you'll see that these walks in other words uh walk slow female walk neutral source walk two male source walk fast walk female source and then um, blend with distance speed scale uh, speed scale max so you can you can fiddle around a little bit with these but do not fiddle with this one that's in your map directory if you want to change this uh, stuff in here I will suggest copy this XML into your map and root this the script um, to, to check in your map not here in the game 
But we're going to leave it as is. Like I always say, leave well alone. Or like uh, my grandpa used to say, <laughs> leave well alone. When the thing works, don't fiddle with it, you know. Because <laughs> then you're going to break it for sure. All right. So let's, um, I'm just showing you what there is in it. There's the type of pedestrians, female, male, and then the characters. You see that there's a dollar data dollar or dollar data S. That means it's an encrypted folder. You cannot access these um, NPCs or, or these humans, unfortunately. <laughs> so there's no way to modify those. And then there's sounds and then there's uh, um, a few other things that you can look at if, if, you, if you're interested. But in my opinion, just leave the pedestrian system XML alone in the, in the map directory. So you can choose any one of the three. And I suppose they might be different. Um, let's just have a look at the um, map French one, for instance. Well, let's do the US one. Um, look at that pedestrian system. If it's the same, I don't know. Um, America, yes, you see. So you've got different looks. Um, uh, probably different humans that look a bit different, you know. And I don't think they talk as much. <laughs> Although I did see some sound. Oh, that's only footsteps. All right. So anyway, enough talk about that. Let's get back to the to the pedestrian system. All right. So I just want to show you if, for instance, you want to find out what these little scripts is and how you need to name them, you can go um, if you open your map and you see any script there. I'm going to show you the pedestrian system one just for, for interest sake. If you open the I3D of the Alpine map, for instance, and you find, um, I just want to show you how I got to this. Control C, Control F, Control V. Just want to show you how I got to it. When you search for pedestrian system in the I3D, if you open the I3D in the editor or, or the um, Notepad++, you'll find the first thing you're going to get to is this. Then you get the node ID. You can grab that node ID to be sure, copy that, drop it in here, Control V, find next, and it will give you the exact two attributes that's run on the pedestrian system, you see. So this is all the stuff you need to know what needs to go into the pedestrian system. So there's a script callback. An on create script callback and it's pedestrian system dot on create. I'm gonna leave this open here while we while we do the two scripts anyway. So here we go. So that's the two scripts we need to make the pedestrian system work. So the first one is an on create and it needs to be like it says here a script callback. The type is a script callback. Alright, so we go here to script callback and you click add. And there it is. And all we need to do now is grab this name here. Uh, pedestrian system dot on create is the value that needs to go in there. Back into the s uh, uh, map here, the editor. Control V. And there it is. There's our first attribute added. Now the second one, according to this boy, is a XML file. So we can double click that and copy it. And it needs to be a string. And there's the directory already. So we can just add these things to the map, guys. So that's Control-V, XML file, and was it a string? Sorry, it's a string. So we're going to go here to string. There it is, add. And then we add the name for it, which is there, or the directory for it. This is now if you want to use that pedestrian system from the Alpine map. If you want to put some Americans in there or, or uh, some, some French, you can obviously just go to the directory for those. So I'm just going to put this in here, Control C, because I mean the, the people there in, in, in uh, Switzerland is probably, <laughs> it's a bit far away from, from England, but uh, for the map it will do, you know. And then we copy and paste that pedestrian system XML in there. And there you go, guys. Now you've got a working pedestrian system um, transform group. Now we ne need to add the spline to that. So we're going to add spline. So first of all, just going to go create spline. And it's going to drop it here at the bottom. We cut it and we drop it in our pedestrian system. Control V, just like that. All right. So now that we have the spline in there, we need to add attributes to make that spline work, to tell the map or the game that this is actually a human spline or a pedestrian spline and there needs, some, there needs to be some stuff on that. So what we're going to do is uh, find the splines here in our XML again. 
So I want to just see. Um, you can go pedestrian system again, find next. And then you'll see here's all the splines. Um, that's in the. Um, all these uh, pedestrian systems is, is little splines that's on the actual Alpine map. So you can grab any one of those and just grab a note ID there to search for it. Control C. Drop it in here in the search and find it and there it is once again we need three attributes there the first one is called density so I'm going to double click copy go back in the map add here control V I should have actually looked there what it is it's a float and the value is 0 0.1 all right so go back here select float click add and make the value now the density guys is the amount of people that's on the spline now I've noticed that if the spline is long and your density is, is, is a bigger value, there will be much more people. If the spline is short, the density makes a tiny bit of difference. I mean, I've put a value up to five on a short spline like from here to here and I could only get two people on it. But the moment I made it longer, I get more people on it. So yeah, uh, so I'm going to just show you now. I'm going to make the value five just for fun. And then we're going to go to the next attribute. And the next attribute is group name. So I'm going to copy that again. Double click. Control C. It's a string and the value is standard. And do check the spelling, guys, uh, of, of the value, for instance. And the group name is also important. That's why copy and paste is so much easier. Um, it, it, it just sorts out. Um, there are now so string. Ah, and I forgot. <laughs> it's a string and the value is standard. Oh, my word. I can't do two things at a time, guys. <laughs> and the value is standard. Now, you can uh, type it in here if you want. Or you can just copy and paste like I do. It's so much easier to copy and paste. And then the last one is uh, width. Control C. Float and value is 2. All right. So we go back here. Control V. It's a width. And it's a float. And we add... And the value here is 2. Now I've seen guys um, the width. I'm not too sure about of the width. But um, most of the widths are from 0.8 to 1 to 1.5 and to 2. It does never really goes more than 2. I haven't really seen any more than 2. But you can fiddle around with those values. Save your map and just fool around a bit and see what's the difference. Okay. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to make two splines just to show you for interest sake how the splines operate so we're going to start there and end here on the corner and then do a second spline up and uh, move down the way there all right so it's first of all go close to where you want to be and then um, grab that first spline click on it control b to place it and drop it here and now you'll see immediately when you drop it you can come close you've got a start a S and an E for start and end. So you want to rotate it in the direction of where we want to go. We want to go that way to the right. So you want to put your start on the left and the end in the way that you want to progress or move. And then all you do is press the insert button once and it will create you a node. You'll see now they will pop a node somewhere here. If I press the insert. Oh, sorry. First of all, obviously, you need to come close and select the E for end. There's a little blue dot there. So once you've got the E, you press the insert and bloop. You'll see it will move forward and create a new node. And now all you do is press Control B again. Move the E a little bit forward, like so. And this is where the people are going to walk, guys. Um, and then press the insert again. Control B, move the E forward, press insert, Control B, move the E forward, and that's all we do. Insert, Control B. Now the insert is the one on your keyboard next to the backspace or above the delete key. Uh, don't get confused with the insert on your keypad, alright? Um, I'm not too sure if that insert will do the same job, but the one I'm using is the one next to the home end it's in that few buttons there next to your backspace or close to your enter all right so all we do is press insert control b move the e and you can really stretch this thing far it doesn't matter it's just to make if you've got a um a slope or something or an incline you can put more 
or if you go around the bend, you can put more of these little nodes to, to make it smoother, you know, to, to go around the bend, for instance. I'll show you now when we get here. Insert, Control B. And you can move these around, guys, like so. And it will it will bend the spline. All right. So like that. Control B. Oh, sorry. Insert first. Control B. So there we go. Control B. No, sorry, I, I shouldn't have control B there. I must first press insert, control <laughs> B. And there we go, insert, control B. And that's all you do, guys. All right, so that's enough for the first spline. Okay, so what we're going to do now is instead of creating a whole new thing with the three attributes, you can just control D and duplicate that spline. That's what I like to do, control D. You'll see it will create a second one. There it is. And guys, these splines, you can now name anything. The name of the spline doesn't matter. I'm just going to call this first one Town. Um, and the second one I'll call Town 2. Just to uh, just to be funny. Alright, so like that. Now, what you want to do now is, you'll see there's a start and an end. So now you want to just, next to the end, you want to come with a start again. So you go select your second spline the new one that you've duplicated and you go to the s come close to the s click on the s that little blue dot there i don't know if you can see it this is the closest i can zoom in <laughs> before it goes crazy and then you're going to drop it right here next to the e Control b just drop it here like close close enough doesn't really matter doesn't have to be that perfect but if you if you have it too far the guys will give a little jump when they come there so <laughs> you want it close all right so now all you do now you press the right button once on your keyboard the, the right arrow not the right button the right arrow Boop, just like that control b so all we're doing now is we're rerouting the the nodes of that duplicated spline and then the right arrow once control b and place it the right arrow once control B and place it and that's all you do right arrow control B place it right arrow control B and place it and you carry on with that until you get to the end and so right arrow control B and place it and right arrow control B and place it right arrow control B place it you see we're almost there now right arrow control B and place it and there you go so now we've duplicated the spline and um, took them around the bend now you can continue this duplicate this one and move on and make the spline as long or, or, or the, the pathway as long as you want or you can come here where we are now we are at the, the last one, the E, and you just press insert, control B, and move the E again. I'm going to actually, let's go down a little bit because there's a slope going down here. I want to show you if you make it too long. So we press insert once, control B, and drop it there. You'll see now, you can see the spline is going underground here. Now what's going to happen is your people's feet is going to move into the into the ground. It won't cause an error on it. It just would look strange when people's feet is like cut off by the ankles, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why that's why I'm going to go Control Z. Just bring that back. Uh, press Insert, Control B, and we'll just make the spline smaller so that it can stay on top. Insert, Control B. Yeah, even that one is too far you know so if you if you see it's going underground just move it back a little bit insert control b and then um in the old editor guys i'm just going to leave it like that that's enough for now in the old editor um you had to have a spline in a circle um there is actually an attribute you can put in for one direction as well um, if you look in the map US um, splines for the pedestrians, you'll see there's an attribute you can add here that you can tick. It's a Boolean, I think, a uh, Boolean attribute that you can tick. Um, and there's a name for it. I can't remember what it is, but I'm just telling you, you can go look in the, open the map in the editor, the US map, and go into the pedestrian splines and check the attributes. You'll find there, there's a spline there 
or, or an attribute there called um, one direction or single direction or something like that. And then you can tick it here um, to, to select it or not to select it. And then people will only walk in one direction. They won't make a U-turn. So what's going to happen now with these two splines combined, um, they're going to start at the start. Uh, there's two splines now. This one has got to start and that one has got to start. So so this, the guy that starts here, at this, this first spline start will walk until he gets to the end. He won't turn around because there will be another start. And then he'll carry on walking up to here. Then he'll turn around. So you're going to find people walking in a loop automatically. In the old FS19, it didn't used to work like that. You had to have the start and the end coming close to each other so that the people can walk in a loop, you know. But these days, they they automatically, when they get to the end, they turn around and they walk back on the spline. <laughs> Great, man. So I'm going to save this now uh, just to go and test it in the map or in the... In so once it's once it's finished saving, we're going to actually run into the game quick. Um, just going to get... Where is my game? Open it up in game and let's have a test and see if the people are actually walking there. <laughs> and remember now, we put five there on the density where it used to be 0 point, point 0.02, I think it was, um, the original density. Right, mod map. This is just a, no, no, no icons, no previews or nothing on the map yet, because um, I'm busy converting it into FS22. So yeah, it's still a long ways to go. <laughs> but it, for, for our educational purposes and, and fun and games, it's more than enough uh, um, to, to get around, you know? So let's just wait for this point to load up. There you go, 100%. Start, escape, and there you go, guys. Oh, one thing I forgot to say, we, we, we didn't make the spline invisible. Now, because the spline is nice and long, you immediately see there's a lot of people on it. So you can make that um, density a lot less. I, I would suggest on this one, make it one, you know, just to uh, um, make it less people walking. And there you go. Very, very nice. And now you'll see... Check here in the middle where the two splines join. The peop this guy there is just continuing at the end on, on the next one. And then they get here to the end. Where the spline ends, you'll see he makes a U-turn. Like that. It's just a quick quick U-turn, almost like in the army. <laughs> Great stuff, man. Good. Um, and remember, guys, um, first of all, if you're in the editor, I'm just going to quickly jump back to the editor. You must select this main transform of yours and just make it invisible like that. Because if you don't do that, it will show the spline in game. And then the other thing is, if you if you don't make it visible, I don't think you can edit it. Let me just have a check if I'm if I'm right or if I'm not right. Can't remember now if it's possible to edit it. I'm gonna try and select it, but boy oh boy, it's difficult selecting these little purple buttons. Yep, it has to be visible. If it's invisible, you cannot edit it. So if at the moment you make it visible, you can edit again. Let's try again. There you go. You see. So um, remember to make it visible to edit. And once you're done, just make it invisible again for in-game. Because otherwise you see that white stripe as we now see here in the... Um, in the game, there's that white stripe of the spline. All right, so that is it, guys. As easy as that, um, you can add people to your game or to your map, rather, and then see them in-game walking. And if you make the density a little bit less, you can play around with the density and the width. Um, that's basically your two settings for the pedestrians. I must say, there is a bit too much people walking on this one now. When I tested earlier on, just to have a bit of information, I I only had a short spline, like here and then there. And the most I could get with five and two was f was uh, three people. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot more now because of the length of the spline, obviously. Well, guys, here we are. I've quickly just made that spline, um, the, den the density on it, I made one. And you'll immediately see there's way less people now. And the, the width is still two. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely... Um, a more s realistic setting or it's actually well mind you this is in town guys you don't see it now but it's like in the center of town or in the side of town uh, main road busy road so uh, it's still a little bit much so i'll make it 
maybe 0.5 or whatever and play around until I get the right, right density of people walking. <laughs> but anyway, there we go. But yes, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope it's been um, educational and at least a little bit uh, information uh, for, for you guys to enjoy. And do like and subscribe. Do share my stuff. And thank you for the guys that support me. You guys are awesome. I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.